And that was the third liver disease update conference. It was held in Great University Theatre. Uh, next, we would like to welcome our guest. And um, if you have any questions for us, just contact us on the following numbers. Or if you, you, if you want, we, you can mention on Twitter as well. There's the numbers. Uh, I'd like to thank you for this invitation and uh, I'm delighted to be in KTV2 and in this nice uh, program. Okay. You're more than welcome. We're actually so proud actually to introduce one of our Kuwait sisters who have been actually uh, done one of the newest surgery in EMT, which is uh, colonoplasty for the stage 2 dysfunction treatment. And you have done it like this last week, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yes, uh, well actually uh, station tube problem uh, is a common problem. Uh, most of uh, the viewer will, uh, they don't know what's station tube uh, exactly. So we'll just uh, show some illustration uh, okay. photos. Okay, yeah, we'll talk about that after uh, the break. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that, but we had just a slight technical mishap. Um, welcome again, doctor. So, uh, as you were saying, uh, you stick into but dysfunction is one of the common problems in Kuwait. Yes. So, can you explain to us what is a stick into? Yeah. So, as I was saying, uh, station two problem is a very common problem that we see all the time in the clinic. Uh, we see it as uh, ENT specialist, uh, family physician will see it a lot. It's a common problem, you it know. Is. Absolutely. Simply to explain it is the problem when you go down from airplane and you feel that your ear blocked, uh, you have some uh, ear pain, uh, the kids will cry always when the airplane go down. It's just that because the station tube blocked. Yeah, so what is the station true. tube? Mm -hmm. Station tube is a small canal between the ear and the nose. And if we can uh, go in the illustration here, we can see that the, this is the ear canal, then there is the eardrum and the middle ear cavity, which is responsible for the hearing. Mm -hmm. And it's like the window of the middle ear, okay? There is a, a small canal that connects the ear to the nose, 
and uh, we can see another illustration here that link directly the nose to the ear so right. any blockage in the nose will cause immediate blockage in the ear and this will cause uh, the common ear infection that we see so in in this first picture the tympanic membrane in white uh, middle ear cavity and that's the window of the uh, ear which is the station tube and the other ear where the station tube is blocked fluid will collect infection and we see that the tympanic membrane or the eardrum change from white which is normal color yeah. to red which is infection and we see lots of fluid and that's a very common problem in, in young kids and in adults where we see uh, you examine the ear uh, the patient is complaining of ear discomfort ear blockage decrease in hearing and ear pain and is it more common in children than adults uh, it is more common in children than adults but in children it's a simple problem okay that goes with age the station tube as we saw in the illustration is an oblique canal so it goes from the ear down to the nose mm -hmm. so it's almost 45 degree uh, uh, slide oh, yeah. uh, in children it's almost horizontal mm -hmm. so it's connect the back of the nose actually the back of the mouth and the nose uh -huh. uh, to the ear so this is where the uh, common recommendation that don't feed the kid while he's uh, sleeping because all the milk will go through the canal, accumulate in the ear, and will cause lots of ear pain and ear infection. That's why we see a lot of this problem, like mothers love to give uh, the milk while they're sleeping because it's much easier, but obviously... Yeah, but, but I mean, that's, that's a common recommendation. Mm. Most of the mothers now, they're well educated. They know that they have to put the kid on 45 degree. So there will be no accumulation in the ear from the milk. We go back to the station tube problems, and especially in adults, because we say in, in kids with age, it will go from uh, like straight canal to slightly uh, oblique canal, and will solve the problem. But in adults, it's the oblique, but it's blocked. It's a muscular canal, it has no uh, valves or no uh, something that it opens and closes it's, it's just a, an empty canal right. sometimes with pressure with uh, lots of infections uh, with nasal allergies and nasal blockage uh, this canal will get uh, blocked mm -hmm. and uh, with medications and uh, pressure when, when we close our nose and mouth and start to blow this canal may open Unfortunately, with, with most of the patients that have ear problems, this canal will not open. And it will cause them, the ear uh, will be always blocked, uh, lots of infection. And the most important thing, that the eardrum will get perforated. And why this happens? Because the air pressure from, the atmospheric air pressure is higher than the pressure in the ear. Mm -hmm. And the window that usually make the middle ear, you know, ventilated is blocked now, which is yeah. the station tube. Uh, so the eardrum will go back and back and back until it gets ruptured and uh, the patient will have decrease in hearing, mm -hmm. recurrent infection, ear discharge. And the patient with these problems, they know that it is, I have this right ear that's always having problems. It will come and goes, it will come and goes, it will like do some uh, there will be discharge all the time and uh, it's never 100% uh, well yes as I said the, the station tube is a canal between the back of the nose and the mouth because the nose and the mouth as we all know they're connected so it's an opening at the back of the nose and mouth to the ear so any problems in this area will affect the station tube. So smoking will do. Uh, a common problem that we always see, which is acid reflux, when some acid from the stomach go back to the airway, which is 
uh, not supposed to have any degree of acid but uh, patient with hyperacidity they will have some acid leakage from the stomach up to their airway and this will cause them lots of swelling in that area uh, the problem will complain of lots of problems between them uh, change in voice uh, throat clearing so they're all all the time <coughs> yeah. clearing their throat because of increased secretions mm -hmm. ear blockage because of the station tube uh, infection uh, post nasal drip or you know secretions from behind the nose trying to clear these uh, these acids mm -hmm. uh, so any problem affecting uh, that area including smoking acid reflux infections mm -hmm. will cause station tube dysfunction and unfortunately for all this time there was no uh, any clear solution for that problem the station tube problem i mean the antibiotics will clear the fluid will prevent the infection but still the patient will complain of ear blockage so it will not open the canal especially in adults uh, and recently, the, the last probably two years, a new technology in Germany was uh, produced. And this technology came from the heart catheterization uh, technology. So what they used to do, and uh, I don't think they still do it in, in uh, uh, catheterization of the heart, in heart angio, they used to go, go with a balloon and they inflate uh, the blood vessel and the blood vessel improved now I think they all use stent and this thing so again if we go on our illustration we can clearly see uh, how uh, the picture look so is this this problem is, uh, what are the causes in adults other than allergies? Is there any another type of problem like it can cause this problem? Unfortunately, it's none of these. Uh, it's just for certain reason this muscular canal it's blocked. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's muscle spasm plus uh, narrowing of this canal for no obvious reason, mm -hmm. uh, and that's. That, that's our problem. If we don't understand exactly what is the problem, we cannot solve it. And what are the alarming symptoms that a patient could uh, have? That could the first symptoms this? will be blocked ear. Mm. And uh, as you said, everybody has tried it. Whenever you go yeah. in the elevator, when you yeah. go uh, like up in the mountain or, or, or down from the airplane. But this is temporary. Yes, yeah. but if this feeling persists for more than a week that's abnormal okay most of the patient after uh, you know common cold or an upper respiratory tract infection they will have this blockage okay. but with minimal medication they can improve and goes back to normal with to like within week maximum uh, what we're talking about is, is a prolonged problem a chronic problem when when the patient have it for more than a year or two then we have to interfere and do this balloon plasty uh, of the canal and make it open. Coming up next is uh, a video of the balloon plasty, but now for advertisements after the break. Rehabilitation Center at the Smand Diabetes Institute. Uh, just want to talk to you about the benefits of exercise in the uh in the diabetic patients so we do have patients who actually what we call them at risk of having diabetes those patients are either uh, overweight or obese or actually ha uh, they have a strong family history of diabetes those patients or both those patients can be at high risk of developing diabetes and we actually can give them a very uh, comprehensive an individualized exercise prescription to prevent the development of diabetes and then we also see patients with diabetes established to have diabetes and we try to help them control their diabetes or their sugar level 
much better, as well as prevent complications. We also see patients with specific complications of diabetes, most notably as the uh, cardiovascular or heart diseases. Those patients, we pay uh, an extra attention to them and we give them a uh, uh, special uh, exercise program to control their disease as well as prevent any progression of their complications. Uh, patients get their uh, blood pressure checked uh, every time they come in on a on daily basis and they also get their sugar level monitored during their exercise. They also get a chance to, to do what we call body composition analysis. And this test, we can tell the patients about also the composition or the percentage of fat versus uh, muscles in their body. And we can also target this to uh, improve the uh, outcome of their exercise. Patients had also the uh, opportunity to uh, participate into either aerobic uh, resistance or aqua exercises. They are monitored and supervised by our uh, uh, specialized staff who are actually very comfortable with uh, supervising them and they see them on regular basis and individually uh, have a look at their heart rate every time that they exercise to monitor the uh, progress. Uh, again, I want to remind everyone that exercise is not only the, a leisure activity, exercise is a medicine for diabetes and also therapy for diabetes, improving overall outcomes of the disease. Have a good evening. Uh, he's actually a businessman oh, yeah. and he travels a lot. Sure. Like he travels almost uh, twice to three times a month. And he said, uh, I'm really fed up. Every time I miss the, the first meeting because severe ear pain, severe ear blockage, I go to the meeting, I can't hear anything, uh, I have lots of uh, blockage. I actually uh, operate on him last year and I put two tubes in both of his ears. And for the last year, he was perfect, but with time, the tube twirled fell down as, as yeah. a usual uh, yeah. practice, mm -hmm. and he came back. And now we have this technology, so I, uh, I told him about uh, the balloon glassy of the station tube, and this should solve your problem. That's so, amazing. Uh, I think now we should put the video of the simple operation. We'll see now. So that was uh, us in the operating room. And what we did is actually the two procedures. So we did uh, the tubes for the ear. So we go through, through the ear canal, small opening in the uh, tympanic brain. And we go, uh, we put small tube to ventilate the ear. So we create a new window for the ear until uh, we fix the old window of the ear, which is the station tube. So as what as we can see now, we are going uh, through the air canal with the microscope mm -hmm. uh, until we see uh, a clear tympanic membrane. We put small opening opening in that tympanic membrane, and we insert that blue, uh, what we call grommet or tube, ventilation tube. What it's gonna do is actually just ventilate the air and act, uh, correct the pressure from the atmospheric pr uh, pressure to the inner ear pressure. Uh -huh. No, that's the, the tube that so you... That's, uh, no, that's, that's uh, what we call speculum. Sep speculum, yeah. Yeah, and we, we're looking into the ear canal. Yeah. Then that's the tube going in. And there is a microscope you're yeah. going to insert. Yeah, that's uh, the tube go, goes in. And we can see the tube is, sits perfectly in the eardrum. Mm -hmm. We'll zoom a little bit to see clearly that the tube is in the middle ear. 
uh, it's ventilating uh, the ear, ca the the middle ear, and that's it. It's actually, as you see, it's one minute procedure. You just put the tube. This tube will fall down out of the ear by itself, so the yeah. the tympanic membrane will close and will push the tube out of the ear canal. Uh, uh, how long does this procedure take usually? A minute, a minute each ear. That's so perfect. that's that's again the other ear. Uh, we're seeing the eardrum, cleaning the ear canal from any wax or something, opening, uh, that's the small opening of mm -hmm. the eardrum with the knife, uh, suctioning any fluid in the middle ear which usually accumulates because of the station tube uh, problem, then taking the blue tube and just sliding it in this small opening. And after the surgery, there's no pain, uh, no bleeding, and as we can see, we just slide it in, and that's it. Can so, see that? yeah, it's yeah, very it's simple. Very simple. Mm. Okay. And the presence of the tube, it wouldn't really affect the hearing after all. No, actually it will improve the hearing. That's good. Because uh, with the station tube dysfunction, uh, the hearing is reduced by 20%. Yes. Yeah. Within the tube will improve the hearing immediately. Okay. So, that's the... That's uh, the first part of the procedure. Yeah, that's that's the balloon blast now. Right. So we go through the nose mm -hmm. okay, until we reach the station tube. We put the balloon in, and that's the balloon. We just insert it into that applicator. Okay. Okay. So now we're inserting the balloon into the applicate into the applicator, and as we see, there is no any cut or opening in this procedure. That's why we're not fully uh, scrubbed in this uh, procedure. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's, it's we can do it under. Uh, in the office, unfortunately, the station tube slightly painful. So painful. ballooning yeah. the, the station tube uh, without uh, GA or general anesthesia, it's going to be a little bit painful. It's ex I think it's painful for the patient. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so that's what we're doing now. Uh, there is nothing sterile because everything is in the nose. So okay. we just uh, thread the balloon through this applicator, then. We go through the camera in the nose uh, with this balloon and do the balloon blasting. This is the gauge that we uh, push some fluid into the balloon mm -hmm. so it dilates. And the process is just involved inflammation, inflation, but doesn't involve any stents inflammation. No, no stents. Like it's that. just pressure okay. for certain amount of time. So what we what we do is putting uh, the gauge up to 10 for two minutes yeah. in, in both canals. So that's that's a view from inside the nose. Okay. Okay. And okay. that's where, where the metallic part is mm -hmm. going into the station tube at the end of the nose. Okay. Uh, as soon as it's in the area, we just push that applicator. Mm -hmm. The balloon, unfortunately, we cannot see the balloon because it's hidden inside. Okay. So the balloon will be inside. Then we apply the pressure for a certain amount of time, and that pressure will improve that area. You can That's see perfect. that the, the white thing below the metallic part, this yeah. is the turbinate, mm -hmm. okay? And we can see how big is the turbinate from allergies. Mm -hmm. And you can see how the station tube related to that turbinate. Mm -hmm. Just inflation a little bit in the turbinate will immediately obstruct the station tube. So that's why allergy always give us ear blockage. And so whenever should the nose you treat, should you treat the allergy before yes, of the course. operation? Of course, mm -hmm. we always treat before and after the operation. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, this just to give us an idea how <coughs> a bad allergy will reflect yeah, it looks really bad. on uh, on our uh, station tube function. And again, as we see, there is no single drop of blood, there is no uh, incision made, uh, no cut done. Just we put the balloon, we keep it for a certain amount of time, and now <coughs> we're just pulling the balloon out and coming uh, out of the canal. Mm -hmm. uh, the patient wake up with no pain, uh, no bleeding, and he can go home like as soon as the anesthesia wears off, which is 30 That's to 40 perfect. minutes. So it's very, yeah, very quick. How long does patient. it take for the patient to notice the difference? You know? They should notice the difference the next day. Usually with this, there will be some edema around it. And the edema will take, the edema is 
for the, the viewers, it's just some swelling happen whenever you touch the tissues. So after the swelling will take place uh, for 24 hours, maximum 48 hours, then the patient will notice the difference that uh, his ear is not blocked and he's, uh, he can hear better. So we can see here that we finished uh, that procedure. Uh, it didn't uh, take a uh, long time. Uh, simple procedure, mm. just place uh, the, the tube in the station uh, uh, canal and just inflate it. Here we're doing the other side, which mm -hmm. took almost exactly the same time. Yeah. And the patient is out of the operating room uh, maximum in 15 to 20 minutes. That's really good. Excellent. And um, for, for this operation, is there any risk of recurrence? Uh, the risk of recurrence is there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, I mean, this technique has been studied mm -hmm. and there is more than one uh, study published uh, about this technique. And uh, all the study says that it is once for life. Okay. That's perfect. Uh, you just do it once and uh, the patient will improve. There is no need to repeat uh, this procedure again. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there is no improvement, we can repeat it. As we saw in the video, mm. there is no, uh, it's not a harmful procedure. It's very easy. We just go through the nose with the scope, put mm -hmm. the balloon inside, inflate it for two minutes, and come out. Uh, the only thing, the only problem for the patient is, is he has to pay for the surgery again because you know this technique yeah. and the catheterization, you know, is not it's a cheap procedure. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of medical problem or complication, is very minimal uh, problem. That's amazing. And uh, is there any, for example, um, this operation? Can you do it for children? Yes, that's the only thing uh, that we can't do. All the studies that was published on this mm -hmm. kind of surgery uh, is for adults. Mm -hmm. uh, there is minor differences in, in the shape of the canal in kids. Yeah. Uh, as we say, uh, the, the, the canal in kids is different size and different shape. So uh, all the studies being published only for adults. So only we're doing adults. this only for adults. Because, as we say, for children, this problem usually resolves by itself. Yeah. So with age, when the, the kid grow above seven to eight years, usually all his station tube will be resolved. So uh, this procedure is only preserved for adults. Okay, perfect. Is there any contraindication for this surgery? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is very minimal contraindication for the surgery. We only uh, exclude patients with uh, facial uh, dysmorphic features or uh, any uh, abnormalities in the ear canal. Patient with uh, absent ear canal or mm -hmm. something like this. That will indicate that even the inner ear canal has uh, some abnormalities in shape. Uh, so these patients, they may go into problems or that the canal is really uh, open to something else and we don't want to go into this risk. Actually, it's not a, co a contraindication, but we just have to do a CT scan prior to doing the procedure. This procedure, you just take the patient to the operating room, you do the procedure and it's done. Uh, if there are any patient with uh, abnormalities in the ear canal, we have to do some kind of x-ray before doing the procedure. Um, is there any similar technology for sinusitis? Yes, well actually the, the, the technology for sinusitis or the balloon sinoplasty has been there before the technology for uh, station tube uh, dysfunction. And it's exactly the same idea of the uh, balloon plasty. You just go in the sinus, mm -hmm. Uh, you put the probe or the balloon inside each sinus and you inflate the balloon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not indicated for any sinusitis. It has limited indication and uh, the recurrence is very high. 
is not as station tube. Not good as yes, station tube. because the station tube is different. It's just a muscular canal with some cartilage. You just inflate it for once. It's improved. Mm -hmm. There is no much of infections in this area. The sinuses are different. The sinuses different. usually get exposed to more and more uh, infection, and this will uh, get all the balloon blasting that you do. They may go into another uh, infection and attacks of infection, and this will cause them to have recurrence. Doctor, if you want to compare the balloon blasting for treatment of sinusitis and you compare it to the old traditional surgical treatment, uh, okay, therapy, which one do you think is better with regard to? Each one has different indication. Uh, patient with uh, nasal polyposis, or where there is polyps filling the nose, you cannot go for uh, balloon plasty. You can only do sinus surgery, where you go, you take all the polyps out, you go with a scope, and what we call the micro divider, which is a special machine that will take all the polyps out and open all the sinuses. Mm -hmm. Because with the polyps and uh, the infections, the sinus is already open, so you, need, you don't need to open them with balloon. But the problem is there is just pressure in the sinus. Oh, yeah. And again, when you go down from the airplane, a severe headache will come. That means there's only a pressure problem with the sinus. These patients will be indicated for that technique. So you just, and sometimes you even can do it in the clinic. You just go with the balloon through uh, the sinus that's open. You inflate the sinus. They will have some pain at but that time. Painful yeah, but it's not as painful mm -hmm. as the station tube. They will have pain at that time. A pressure will be uh, generated at the opening of the sinus. The sinus will be open, and then uh, the patient will be really relieved of from his symptoms. That's excellent. We're actually glad that this new technology has been implemented in our side effects, because it has less side effects and much more convenient to the patients. You know. uh, I think now we're actually going to uh, see some of the videotapes from, from the public. We're going to ask you some of the questions about the industry. Okay. No, no, that's great. happens with people like sneezing and so and sinusitis so how can we avoid this and uh, minimize the symptoms for the this uh, reaction, allergic reaction i would like to know about the rhinoplasty and i hear there are kind of uh, surgeries have been done uh, by the needles or the syringes so is it the same as a real surgery as a real case or no uh, my question to the doctor is uh, if there is a new technique or methods for treating uh, snoring? My question is about sinus surgery. I, I fly quite a bit on airplanes and I understand that there are new advancements in sinus surgery uh, um, that may be able to reduce the irritations uh, um, that, that I get from flying on airplanes. Can you please explain what the newest advances are? about the, the new technologies uh, of snoring. And there is always new technology. That's the nice thing about you know uh, medicine. There is always new techniques and new things uh, for uh, treating uh, our problem. Snoring is a big problem. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it's a social problem more than a medical problem. And we always we see that the partner or, or the wife usually complain that yeah, her husband is, is it's, it's uh, annoying for yeah, the wife. <laughs> yeah. uh, and usually she will drag the husband for, for the doctor saying that he has problems. And most, most of the patients, they said, well, I don't need surgery. I don't want to go for general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. uh, I need something simple. I need something to be done uh, in the clinic. And now this is available. That's yeah. yeah, we have more than one technique that we can do to improve snoring in the clinic. So the patient will come, will have some procedure done to him in the clinic.
less painful, uh, less time consuming. He finished the procedure and go home, and actually it solves his problems. And this, uh, there are two options to be done in the clinic. Yeah. Either uh, we inject fillers, so just some kind of injection in the soft palate at the back of the nose, uh, sorry, at the back of the mouth, and this injections will make the soft palate stiff and it will elevate it a little bit, so less uh, vibration will be on the tongue and the patient will improve the snoring. The other thing, if there is that the uvula is too, too large, we can just shorten it in the mm -hmm. clinic and this will solve uh, the snoring problem. That's amazing. And it makes a happy wife as well. <laughs> yeah. I have some questions actually from Nigeria. He said actually he's been using the headsets actually for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we get this question all the time: Is the phones using the phone is it harmful or not? Is it is using the headset is harmful or not? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's answer the phone part first. Using the phone, there is no study indicating that this is uh, harmful or gonna destroy the ear. Uh, maybe it will. I'm saying there is no studies until now, until this day, saying that the, using uh, the cellular phone uh, gonna harm the ear. That's one thing. Using the headset, the headset of the phone shouldn't cause any problem. But using the headset with iPod with the very high uh, sound of uh, music and these things, mm -hmm. this may destroy the ear. And that depends on, on the amount uh, of sound delivered to the ear canal. So if, if you put the volume on a very good uh, speakers in the ear, mm -hmm. that will harm the ear. But uh, what the patient complained is pain in the, pain, the ear canal, the pain and that well. that's just pressure pain. You pressure know, pain. just try to carry a bag on your left shoulder for a long time. You yeah. have it's the same as holding the mobile phone exactly. for a long time. On it's the just ear. pressure. It's These pain. are all soft cartilages. Yeah, you just put pressure on them for a long time, more than an hour, then uh, a pain will develop. Mm -hmm. I'd like to answer another question they ask about uh, rhinoplasty and the different kind of uh, technique, in, like the new techniques or uh, the, something in the clinic versus the operating room. Uh, and as we said, we always develop new technique. Uh, the patients always ask about the new technique. So the new technique of rhinoplasty is the non-surgical technique, which is just doing some injections. Uh, and injection, uh, either adding volume or reducing volume from the nose to make it look better. Uh, because always uh, the nose, they will complain, all the patients will complain, either a small bump at the, ba at the back of the nose that's making it uh, look big. And th this we can hide it just by simple injection above it and below it or that uh, the nose is, is big and uh, most of uh, like the, the ladies especially who go into pregnancy and delivery they will have lots of fluid accumulation in the nose yeah. and after delivery this so fluid disappears. doesn't disappear it yeah. stays and the nose is big and she said my nose is not as it used to be and we can inject some injection to make uh, that area go smaller and uh, it goes back to normal. The formal uh, rhinoplasty where there is lots of uh, problems in the nose or there is a trauma and there is a deviation in the nose and it's crooked to one side or the other and it doesn't get corrected unless we open the nose and we do all the correction in the bone and in the cartilage. It's, it's if you inject, for example, a nose, uh, but it doesn't work. Uh, can you operate yes. or is it contraindicated in this All case? All the injection that we use uh, are per not permanent. We shouldn't use any permanent injection. Uh, and the, the, all the viewers, they should take this 
for granted. Never inject anything permanent in the nose. Yeah. All the injection has to be temporary. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and that are the safe kind of filler uh, that they should inject. Uh, it's called hyaluronic acid. It stays from nine months to one year maximum. You inject it in a specific area. If it does, if it look well and the patient is happy, that's perfect. If they're, they're not happy and they need more, then you can go for surgery. Yeah. The, the good thing about this material is very safe. It's not going to do any tissue damage. So when you go into the surgery and open, you, you just remove it and all, so the, it safe, yeah, all, all the tissue around is mm -hmm. going to be healthy and you can correct it without any problem to the surgeon or to the patient. So. And probably it's cheaper to get injections rather yeah, than actually, surgery. Actually, it's like 20% of the price of the surgery, so mm -hmm. it's much cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one last question from the audience. One, one patient is, they say, like, we have a frequent earwax, and uh, she was asking, is it safe actually to clean the earwax actually frequently? Or okay, uh, it's safe to clean the earwax by the specialist. Yeah. It's not safe to clean the earwax by themselves. Okay. okay? Uh, lots of patients, they don't need, or let's rephrase it, most of the, or most of like the population, they don't have to clean their ears. The ear has its own mechanism of cleaning itself. Right. Okay, we don't have to clean the ear. The all the wax in the ear will be mm -hmm. uh, like pushed out of the ear by um, a mechanism that's you know God created for us. Yeah. So yeah. all, like, uh, all yeah, buttons, exactly. All oh, yeah. all the ear uh, the wax will get out without our help. If you start using the cotton bud, you're, you're pushing the wax against its normal uh, production. So you're, it's going this way and you're pushing it this way. Exactly. And, and that's what all the doctors would recommend against. Exactly. Uh, but in certain patients, that mechanism is not as good as in, in uh, other uh, people. So we just, they just have to see their doctors once or twice a year and we get all this wax out. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed. It's been a pleasure meeting you today. Um, so I guess it's, that's it for our program. Thank you so much for watching us today. Um, thanks a lot, Dr. Mohammed, for you, for you to come actually and uh, view your latest uh, technologies and treating this patient. It's our pleasure to be with you in Kuwait TV and it's our pleasure to get any useful information to the viewers. Thank you. We're probably going to see you hopefully by next next time maybe. Inshallah. Thank you.